In this video, I will continue configuring our VPC transit gateway environment. This is part four of my AWS VPC series. In part two of AWS VPC transit gateway, please watch the first three. If you are new to AWS, I'll provide the links in the description down below. In our previous video, we built an AWS VPC transit gateway from the ground up and we noticed how routing comes into play just like it does with any router. Without even planning on it, we had to create subnets by further subdividing the 10.1, the 10.2 and the 10.3 16 networks. Of course, if this was a production network, we would have planned these things ahead of time. That's part of being an architect. Now let's create three EC2 instances in each of the three VPCs. You already know how to create these. So I'll just show one important detail and that is picking the correct VPC. I'll enable a public IP address just so that I can SSH into this one only for testing access to the other EC2s. In addition, I also have to configure the security groups and allow ICMP so that the 10.2 and 10.3 networks can ping. When we configure the EC2 in VPC one, we have to ensure that pings are allowed from VPC two and VPC three 10.2 16 and 10.3 16 respectively. When we configure the EC two and VPC two, we need to allow pings from VPC one and VPC three and so forth. Let's quickly launch our extra EC2s in each respective VPC each time ensuring that it goes into the correct VPC. Now let's SSH to the EC2 in VPC one, which is the only one we configured with the public IP address. Let's ping the IP address of the EC2 in VPC two and VPC three, please take a moment and hit that subscribe button. Pings are not successful. Why not? Remember that these are brand new VPCs and we didn't add any routes. We need to create routes from each VPC to the other two. VPC one needs a route to 10.2 and 10.3 networks. And we have to use the transit gateway as our next hop. VPC two needs routes to 10.1 and 10.3 through the transit gateway. And VPC three needs routes to 10.1 and 10.2. Each time we create routes in our VPCs, we want to ensure that we are specifying both the correct destinations and transit gateway. As I have mentioned before, with the few VPCs, it's not an issue. But when you are dealing with many VPCs, it can become quite complicated. A good IP addressing scheme and naming convention will alleviate some of the complexity. In our example, we use 10.1 with VPC 1, 10.2 with VPC 2. This naming convention helps us to track the changes that we're doing and it alleviates, as I mentioned, some of the complexity in configuring our environment. Now that we have everything configured, let's attempt pinging from the EC2 in VPC 1. Our pings are now successful. We can ping each of the EC2s in the other VPCs. When we take a look at our dashboard, 
we can see that we do not have any VPC peering connections. And then it clearly shows that our traffic is traversing the transit gateway. When we look at our transit gateway, we also can see the routes. We could see our propagations. And this is another area where we could configure our routes as well. We used one method of doing this, and this would present another method. If you like this video, please subscribe. Please give me a thumbs up and smash that notification bell. I will be posting many more tutorials.